Hello and welcome to a new video about Pragmatics. This time we are trying to solve our issue from last time. Our issue from last time was that we had signal overlapping. And we said we can make signal suppression, so make warm pressures smaller or stronger, either by changing the control area of the piston or by reducing the pressure somehow with a pressure regulating valve. Well, okay, that's one possibility. Today we want to look into signal turnoff. Uh, today we want to look into uh, the possibility of using roller lever with idle return. Okay. What is roller lever with idle return? Uh, a typical roller lever valve, a heavy one. Uh, this is a hydraulic version, uh, but this is a typical roller lever valve. Okay. So there's the roller lever, and this will press, operate the valve. Uh, and if something comes now from this direction, it will operate. If something comes from this direction, it will operate. Uh, does not really matter from which direction something is coming. Yeah? A roller lever somehow looks pretty much the same. Yeah? However, the roll is mounted with an additional joint, uh, and, it, and this additional joint is enabling the roll to yield in one direction. So it's pretty much working like the hand. Yeah? If I'm going in this direction, the roll must press down. Okay? If I'm going in this direction, the, the roll may be yield due additional joint. Uh, so in this direction, the joint is at the limit, it cannot extend, so the valve will be operated. In the other direction, the lever will just yield and there's no operation of the valve. Yeah? It's just yielding. In this direction, we need to operate. Okay? This is exactly what a roller lever valve with idle return means. Here, this is the drawing from last time. Okay? We identified two issues. Yeah? Here, even in the first in the first uh, step, we had an issue because here this was pressed, BG3 was pressed because this was inside. Yeah? So we had here a signal and we get here a signal. Yeah? So here already we got signal overlapping. So if we are using here BG3 not as a standard valve, but as a valve which will not be operated when going outside, but Going inside, it will operate, and then the notch or whatever is operating this valve is passing the valve, and the valve will not be operated anymore. So the full end position will not be monitored by this valve, only the passing by of this valve, which is located rather, rather close to its end position, however, not at the end position. So, if we're passing this valve, which is not at the end position in this direction, we are not triggering it. Triggering it. If we're passing this valve in this direction, we are triggering it. So, this is the plan now. Let's see, PG1. PG1 needs to be a standard valve because we need pressure here. And because this is an end valve, yeah? so the two pressure valve. If we want to have pressure here, which we need, yeah? this must be operated. So I prepared already something. Yeah? So let's see. Yeah? This was the previous version. We said at PG1 we're not changing in anything. Yeah? So PG1 will still be standard roller lever. Yeah? And this will be operated. One, three, two. So this looks pretty much the same. However, this valve now, this is now a roller level with idle return, looking like this, the symbol. Yeah. So this additional joint here is simply shown, and of course in standstill, it's no longer operated. Yeah. That's the that's the trick about it. Yeah? So here now, the 
the first thing I've sold. Here we only have to show in which direction we are triggering this valve in this direction. So we may make a little arrow here and this means in this direction BG3 shall be triggered. Okay, So only here, somewhere here, this will trigger the to travel MM1 inside. Okay. Where did we have the se second issue? Let's have a look. Uh, the next one was working. So BG2 operating was working. Yeah. However, when we operate BG4, uh, when we operate BG4, we say we still have here BG2 and BG4 additionally. Yeah. So this must go away after, after it has triggered the event so that this will travel. So after here, this needs to go away. So this one here actually also needs to be a roller level with idle return. So this time also here we have a roller level with idle return. One, three, two. And this time we will trigger it by going outside. Okay, but not in the end position. If we are at the end position, we are already past this, and this will look like this. Okay. BG4, we said we have no issue, right? So if BG4 is touched, here we can immediately go in. So BG4 can be again standard standard program let's call it <laughs> one three two okay so now we think we have solved this. Let's see. Let's see. Start. We are starting here. This was moved inside. This has been triggered, but not long and longer triggered. So we assume simply why we are at the left position. And this is already a big disadvantage of this. We cannot be sure just because this and this does not mean to have a contact, yeah? are not touched does not necessarily mean we are at the full left position. It might be somewhere else. The only thing we know, PG3 and PG4 are not operated. Okay? We say, we think, we assume that's it. Uh, this is how it's working. Uh, so PG3 is not operated, so there is no pressure. If I press this button here, I have only one pressure, to, so this signal overlapping is solved now. This will switch. Yeah. So this will travel outside. PG1 will released, will be released. There is no pressure. This remains right. No issue there. Yeah. We will travel outside. This is this first step. And somewhere close to the end, but not at the end, we will shortly make a signal here, passing this. Yeah. Because we will operate this arrow to the right if we are going outside. So this will then trigger here. This is currently not touched yeah, because this is not operated. Yeah. So this will switch. switch. So this will travel. Since this is traveling, something here is happening. No, there is nothing happening because it's the idle, idle part. Yeah. We are only triggering if we are going left, but we are going right. Yeah. So we will go outside, touch them BG4, BG2 is already gone, yeah, because this has just short impulse here, yeah. BG4 is pushed, switch, yeah, travel inside again, and now BG4 is released again, no issue there, there is no pressure, 
after a while we will get to BG3, so we are here now. Yeah? BG3 is shortly triggered, yeah? and this shortly triggered because here is no pressure, because BG1 is pressureless and also probably SJ1 is already released by somebody. Uh, this will and this will go in. Now it's working. Now it is working. Okay. So we have turned off the signal which are overlapping by using idle return valves. Hmm. However, the issue here is that the end position, like I mentioned, they are not monitored. This can simply be stuck somewhere or whatever. Yeah? This is simply not monitored. If it's going in, shortly touching this and going out again, nobody will notice. So the, the program, how good we follow the program, this might be an issue if we are using it this way, yeah? if we are solving this this way. I mentioned last time a second thing, yeah? a synchronized chain. Well, we're not going that far that we're doing synchronized chain. Yeah? However, I will show you the principle do only supply the valves which are needed by a step. Yeah? So this then will be in next video. Yeah? We are learning a different approach with standard roller lever valves, just so we can also uh, monitor the end position. However, the logic looks a little bit more complicated. How? I will show you next, next time. Yeah. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.